Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Hogue Counter-Strike OTF. This is part of their collector series, um, but it is very competitively priced with other things that are legitimately in its direct competition zone, and it brings some seriously awesome stuff to the table. Uh, this is a, a knife that um, you know drives the point home that I always make. Hogue is one of the most underrated knife companies right now, and I know that they are popular. And what I mean by this is they should be substantially more popular. Uh, they do make their knives in the USA, absolutely. Um, and if you are somebody who appreciates that, not everybody does, but I do, and I know that there are a lot of people who watch my channel who appreciate that, you should be paying attention to Hogue because they're making some seriously awesome stuff. Um, this is also in Magna Cut, and Hogue is one of those companies that's going, yeah, you know what, we're actually going to heat treat it where people, you know, are wanting it, where it is uh, supposed to be, uh, you know, optimum. They're hitting those higher numbers, which is really, really cool. Uh, thank you so much to Ryan for loaning this to me for review. Ryan is a viewer and has loaned this to me for review. It will go back to him when I am done. It's because of people like Ryan that I'm able to bring you guys daily and have content. Uh, thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and measure the Counter-Strike. Not a huge OTF, but I'd still call it a full-size knife. Coming in at 8 inches if we're going to the body. If you want to measure out to the glass breaker, which I think is silly, but we'll, we'll do it. Uh, it it's about 8.35 inches. Blade length is probably about 3.35. And then your cutting edge is about 3 and an eighth. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. And the Ontario Rat Model 2. Very slender OTF, absolutely, but, you know, still, you know, fairly, fairly large. Uh, let's go ahead and put it up against the Spyderco PM2. And the Spyderco Para 3. Definitely closer to the size of the PM2. And then last but not least, another Hogue. The Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Another excellent knife. Another knife that <laughs> kind of drives the point on what I'm saying about Hogue being underrated. Uh, and then um, we have the Benchmade Griptilian, I'm sorry, we have the Benchmade Bug Out, which also is a fairly narrow profile, but not quite as narrow as the Counter Strike. How's the action? It's definitely a question you have to ask when we're talking about an OTF. Oh boy, it's real snappy, guys. And it's one of those where on lockout, it is so minimal. Not a deadlock, obviously. Well, I'm talking Microtech level solidity, right? Or, um, you know, the other major competitor, like the Max Ace Medusa. We're talking that level of solidity, right? Knives in this price range, no matter what you hear, no matter what you read, I promise you, you can look back at my content. I have handled an insane number of OTF knives, premium OTF knives that are made mostly in the United States, right? Uh, I've handled an insane number of them. Have multiple versions of the same knife, right? Let me tell you this. None of them are completely and totally solid on lockout except the deadlock. The over th the the, the $1,000, $1,500, custom OTFs that are designed to lock out completely and totally solid. Every time I say that, there's at least one person who claims that their Benchmade Infidel is lo uh, solid on lockout. It's not true. And that is also the wobbliest one, far and away. <laughs> Those things are just like wet noodles flapping around on the inside of a, like, I, I don't know, something that's not sized properly for a wet noodle. Um, this is nice though. It's snappy. It's quick. It feels powerful and it locks out really, really nice. Just subtle movement on lockout. Really good. And the switch is uh, not near, it's nowhere near as aggressive as like the uh, the Ultratech. I'm going to actually get out the Ultratech and um, I'm going to also get out the Direct Delta because those are two Microtech models that are pretty, you know, competitive, like especially the Ultratech. The thing I don't like about the Ultratech is the switch. God, it's just angry. It's such an angry switch. Like every time I'm like, oh, I like the Ultratech, but it, it's slowly irritates my finger the more that I'm, you know, on it. Uh, not at all with this. This is uh, extremely comfortable, and it's because the ridges or the teeth, right, the jimping, 
nowhere near as aggressive, and it also comes up to a little bit more of a, an aggressive, well, uh, or uh, not aggressive, that's the wrong word, um, a more distinct peak, right? We'll put it up against the Dirac Delta, which is kind of in between on, in terms of like how it feels on your hand, right? Uh, this is uh, placed on the face, and it's wider, so it's a little bit easier on the thumb, but it's still got some pretty aggressive teeth. This guy is just like a bigger, it's almost like this, a similar look. It's just like on steroids, right? So this is very much, the Counter-Strike is very, very much the same, basically the same length as the Ultratech. It is a tiny bit longer, just a teeny tiny bit, but it is very, very comparable to um, the Ultratech. Um, and the action, I got I got to say... The action honestly feels a little bit better than the Ultratech. The Ultratech is good. I like my Ultratech. This, it just feels a little bit more, you know, when you, you ever gone to a dealership and you, you check out like, you know, the base level model, open and close the door. If you've never done this, open and close the door on the base level models and then go look at the nicest one, right? Trucks are this way. Go look at a tradesman if they still make the tradesman rams, right? And then go look at a, you know, a limited and open and close the doors. There's a huge difference. <laughs> There's a gigantic difference, right? Some people pick up on these things and some people don't. It's okay, but this this has got it. I like this. It feels good. Very happy with it. Uh, let's go ahead and do carry profile. I think this is an easy one. Length and height up against the PM2 and para 3. Got this knife backwards, but that's okay. It's just a long, smooth rectangle. Yeah, this is going to be easy on the, the pocket. Thickness, I think it's a little bit thick. No, not really. And it's also slightly contoured, which is really impressive that Hogue is doing this in the United States. It's very, it's very impressive, right? Gotta, gotta take note of that when we're considering that price tag, right? This is absolutely a cool thing that Hogue is able to do this. Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. I think we're actually ready to go here with some T8, these cool blue heads that we've got. To my knowledge, these are actually titanium. I could be wrong. They could actually be steel that has been heated blue. Uh, I just automatically assumed that they were titanium and didn't think to check. But if they're not, you know, not that big of a deal. Uh, this, uh, you know, the, there's not a massive amount of the price tag going into whether or not the screws are titanium. Um, my favorite thing about this, it's a cool look. Blue uh, on, um, <laughs> you can hear my wife moving the Christmas decorations around uh, right behind the wall there. Um, but uh, my favorite thing here is uh, not not just that the blue looks cool against the carbon fiber, um, but uh, that they're T8 and that they're not proprietary. You can actually get into this, which is cool. Very nice move, Hogue. Uh, shouldn't be that difficult. OTF knives are really not that challenging to take apart and put back together. You just got to, you know, got to have a place to put the hardware uh, and uh, a good set of tools and you'll be good to go. Let's go ahead and weigh it. I'll get out my scale here real quick. Weight of the Hogue Counter-Strike is going to be... Uh, an impressive 2.79 ounces. That's nice. Um, compare that with the Ultratech that is all aluminum, 3.49 ounces. And I love to carry this knife, right? Same with the, I should have brought the Guardian Tactical Recon 35 down here. That's uh, up in my room, but um, no, that's nice. Man, <laughs> really, really great. Uh, no issues there with weight. And then finally, we'll measure blade stock thickness. We'll see if I can get it that flat real quick. I'm going to guess that's 100. 15, come on, zero out. Let's see if we can grab it right on the flat. No? I'm saying one, 125, okay. Little, probably a little thick. Probably should have been a little bit thinner, but okay. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the meat and potatoes here. Boy, this is a good looking OTF. Look at that carbon fiber, that is nice. And the milling on there, boy, that's beautiful. Same way with the aluminum side, really really nice they could have just made it flat but they didn't it's a really nice look the fit and finish on this thing is excellent the carbon fiber looks great uh between the carbon fiber and the aluminum parts everything looks good it meets up hogue is just getting better and better and better i gotta say this now there's a chance no matter who you buy from doesn't matter if it's guardian tactical microtech right i critique this and let me i'll, I'll drive this this point home and share with you this detail uh, on uh, another one of my prized Microtechs, right? 
It is not easy, even when we're talking about machine grinding, to get a perfectly symmetrical dagger blade. I'm happy to report that this line does truly go right down the middle and out to the tip, and it even looks good. The, the uh, final cutting bevel on both sides looks pretty good, save for maybe down here. This little, got a little tiny smuts. I really, I don't even want to critique that, right? Same on this side. It looks good. But the fuller is slightly, ever so slightly off to one side. On this side, I know, minor detail. And on this side, it's fine, it's perfect, but then you come down here and it's a little thinner on this side of the flat versus this side. Does that affect the knife functionally? No. I, initially I was like, you gotta be getting that right, you know, Microtech's getting that right, and then I got to looking at this Direct Delta, and on one of the sides, it is not perfect. Is it this side? This side, <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> this is a, a knife that costs, uh, or when I bought it, it was similarly priced. I think it was a little more, right? Uh, on one side, the flat's a little thinner, and it's a little so you know. And and the, the same thing, the, the grind, uh, the the um, the line out to the tip is great on the Microtech here. Uh, they did a better job down here at the end, kind of finishing off, finishing it off a little bit. I guess it's slightly wider right there. Can't complain too much here. I think what's much more important is. You know, this is a, a dagger ground OTF, so even at 125 thousandths, there's not a lot of room to taper down to a super, th unless they like hollow ground it, which they did in this flat ground. So it is fairly thick behind the edge, but will it still cut and slice? Yeah, it will. It's just not super duper ready to bite in, right? You can see there, I'm kind of having to fight it a little bit. It will. It will cut, it will poke, and then you can drag it through, and it'll definitely do that, right? It's just not going to be the most aggressive slicer. And as you continue to sharpen it up, um, you know, it, it's going to get thicker and thicker. The benefit here, though, is that you have two edges, and this has been properly heat treated, right? Now, you know, if you, uh, you know, buy this and you plan to use it, then you probably are fairly familiar with sharpening steels like this, right? Um, so you can uh, reprofile it if you want to, maybe get a little bit thinner, but it is not the most ready to bite into material type of knife, right? People don't generally buy OTF knives expecting them to slice like an open out, right? But it will cut, it will do that. And um, with a dagger ground blade, you get literally twice the edge retention and 100% poking ability, plus 100 poke damage, right? Uh, it's definitely gonna do that. So it's nice, um, and it's that's the same can be said for most dagger ground OTF knives. Unless you have a really wide blade and it's hollow ground, it's just not going to be the thinnest one. That I mean, like the my um, sharp by design arch nemesis is an example of a hollow ground dagger blade that's real wide. So it actually does get. So it's not an even remotely necessary comparison, but it, this does actually get fairly thin out here, right? But we're not looking at the at the same thing at all. Um, but anyways, yeah, uh, pretty thick behind the edge. I wish the fuller was absolutely perfect, but it's not. And I feel like it's unreasonable to expect it to be even on the Max Ace Medusa 2.0. Even that thing was slightly off. So it's hard to do, right? If these ultra mega precision Chinese companies can't even get it right all the time, then I, I really can't come down on Hogue for not being able to, to get it perfect, right? I think it's possible, but I think, you know, you should expect there's a, there's a pretty good chance that something about the, a, the dagger ground blade is not going to be absolutely perfect, right? So, it's trying to be reasonable here with my critiques. We have a lanyard thing, lanyard duck bill, and we also have a glass breaker thing, which is just something that OTF knife makers just feel like we absolutely have to need. Like, something about people who, they're like, yeah, you know, people who like OTF knives, you know, regularly find themselves in cars that are sinking to the bottom of the ocean. So, of course, they need a, a glass breaker. I Okay. <laughs> I think there are aftermarket screws that you can buy for this. You can just take this off and put the screw in there. I'm sure that the, it exists. Um, I do love the clip. I absolutely love the clip. I think it's fantastic. It just drops and slight swoop up and not really. I, I mean, I'm aware that it's there, but it's not bothering me. This thing is so comfortable to hang on to as well because of the contouring and all the smooth edges. Really, really nice. It just feels like, yes, yes, they did this right. It feels good. In and out of the pocket, it's great as well. 
It appears to be um, that you can flip this around. I'm trying to look and see if it's milled differently. No, I don't think so. I think you just flip this around if you want to, but you don't, I, I mean, yeah, I guess you would for lefties. You want to put on this side because the switch is right here. Right? It's only the case if it's a face switch that you don't have to do that, but you can flip it over. Lefties can enjoy this, right? Just as much as righties. Um, yeah, this is really cool. Very much. And when that blade is all the way into the handle, I'll let you guys look at where that tip actually comes to. It does clear it so you can run your finger over it, not touch it. If you try to poke down in there and be like, ow, I can feel it because I'm mashing my finger into the end of it. Well, that's your fault. Don't do that, right? Um, but it's not going to be the case because the thing is going to mount like this in your pocket. Um, this takes a lot of deliberate force to throw. So if you're somebody who's not familiar with OTF knives and you're thinking, what if that goes off in my pocket? It's not going to. The amount of deliberate force you have to apply to this to get it to deploy, it's just not its just not a realistic scenario where the thing goes off in your pocket. I've always argued, a lot of people say OTF knives are dangerous and that that's what they're illegal because they're weapons and they're scary and they're dangerous. I have always said that I think OTF knives, not only are they no more dangerous than a regular knife, I think they're actually safer than a regular pocket knife. Um, this blade, to deploy it, is one move. To retract it is one move, and it is housed securely inside of the handle. It's also too much. It takes too much force for a normal child to be able to accidentally deploy this thing, right? Um, or people who have weaker hands. They're just not going to be able to deploy this, right? On top of that, um, this is absolutely uh, a knife where if the... I mean, you're not going to be able to hold this. A lot of people believe, just like in movies, you can hold switchblades up to a solid surface and it's going to go right through it. No. That is movie nonsense, right? Even the most powerful OTF switchblades in existence, the single action, right? I think the most powerful one that I'm aware of is like the Microtech um, Halo 6. That'll definitely send you to the hospital, but will it puncture you all the way through? No, it will not. You might have stitches, right? But no, it won't. This, I would not, I mean, obviously it wouldn't be a good idea for me to fire this into my hand, right? Um, but is it going to go all the way through? Absolutely not. That's ridiculous. Movie nonsense. Um, it doesn't matter. I mean, if we're talking about even my, you know, fifteen hundred dollar or what, however much this was, the Hawk Deadlock. Even this one, not gonna, not gonna do that. That's not the idea behind an OTF. The idea is quick and convenient deployment, right? Once it's there, once it's locked out, these are absolutely durable. Uh, uh, these American OTFs, as proven many times over by the X-Ring channel, these are plenty durable. Not the type of knife you want to stab into something and pry. Then again, what knife is actually made for that? Not many. Um, not the tool that I'd use for that. But this is a reliable, functional, convenient, and most importantly, safe tool. OTF knives are some of the very best for general EDC. The only downside is, is if you get a lot of debris in there, it can, you know, screw with the chassis while you're deploying it. This thing has continued to fire over and over again, no problem. I probably fired it 250 times since I've had it. Been totally fine. No misfires or anything like that. Let's talk about that price tag, $339. Do I think that's fair? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? That is a, that's absolutely fair. A regular Ultratech now costs 300 bucks and doesn't bring anything necessarily amazing to the table. Um, if you're looking for something that's got a little bit of extra, mm, but you don't want to pay like crazy higher, like the Microtech Signature Series, essentially... If Microtech made this, they would call it a signature series and they would charge $500 to $550 for it. Absolute. All day. That's exactly what they would do, right? Hogue wants $339 for this and I think it's amazing. I love Microtech. I love Microtech knives. But <laughs> their prices have gotten ridiculous, especially their signature series stuff. Uh, in the direct competition zone, Dirac Delta Ultratech Recon 35. Um, the Recon 35, if you're looking for a, an all, all business, no pomp and frill knife, then go with the base version of that. I have the carbon fiber one and they charge 350 for it. The fit and finish on the Hogue is better and the overall execution of materials is better. Um, properly heat treated, uh, magna cut is not cheap. Um, doing the carbon fiber like this, right? You could, you could reduce it and say it's just carbon fiber. There's a difference between just carbon fiber and doing carbon fiber like this. This is nice carbon fiber. It's been machined nicely. It's been contoured. It's been fitted perfectly. That costs a lot more money than just carving out a crappy rectangle and slapping it on a knife, right? 
the, the base cost of carbon fiber before you turn it into whatever you're going to turn it into, yeah, it's not a super expensive material, but the cost goes into the work that is involved, right? This is an impressive knife. Um, one of the most impressive USA made OTF knives that I've handled. I think the price is excellent. Very, very recommendable. It has the word collector in it, but can you buy this and take it out and use it? Absolutely. It's plenty durable. This is a super cool knife. Hogue just continues to impress. Incredibly, incredibly recommendable for people who want to carry and use an OTF and for people who can actually legally do that. Unfortunately, we still have a lot of stupid laws in place uh, in a lot of places, right? So you might not be able to legally carry or even own this. So check your local laws. Don't try to buy this and be like, oh, Metal Complex said it's a great EDC knife, right? Check your local laws, right? Might be illegal where you live. Anyways, that's going to be pretty much it. Thanks again to Ryan for sending this in. This is an awesome one. Uh, it'll be on my most recommended knives playlist. Um, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.